Just like Abby Kemi, nothing else make it brighter day than viewing your favorite playlist and more on your favorite channel. Even Mama Abike can relate. TSTV connecting your world. Getting your TSTV decoder just got easier. Simply log on to www.tstvafrica.shop. Select any item of your choice by clicking on Add to Cart. Click on Proceed to check out to make payment. For new users, fill in the required billing details. Check the website terms and condition box to agree. Click on Place Order. Click on Make Payment. On the payment page, fill in your card details. Confirm the amount and click Pay. You can also pay via USSD bank, bank transfer and other payment platforms. Order your TSTV decoder now and get it delivered to your doorstep. TSTV, connecting your world.
All right, thank you so much. Good to have you back. It's still our yard program proper on PRO TV. Like I told you before, we have a very wonderful personality, a young guy, vibrant, oh, that you would love to listen to on our program today. All right, so we'll get to talk the matter as it just be. Okay, all right. Um, just quickly join me as we welcome the one and only personality, the young guy. Just for the few minutes we've been together, I just like him like that. All right, good to have you on our Thank show. Thank you, Kisha. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, nice, nice meeting you here. My honor, my yeah. honor. My honor. <laughs> All right, um, let's get to meet you. And, Thank you. Um, yeah. My name is Michael Amoson. Right. I'm a lawyer in equity. That means I'm a law student from the Obafe Miaolo University for Nigeria. Wow, great. Yes, I'm an SDG advocate. I am a Millennium Fellow and I do a lot more. Definitely. Oh, you do a lot more? Yes. Wow, that's. You actually represent Nigeria. Thank you. I can yeah. say that. Yeah, you represent Nigeria because. Um, when, when you hear Nigeria saying, I, I do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Take him to anywhere. Mm -hmm. Take him to any island. Yeah. He can yeah. survive it. I believe so. I believe also that every rounded person called a Nigerian yeah. is not somebody that knows everything about a thing, but somebody that knows a thing about everything, at least a little thing about Good. every part of things. Good. Yeah. That's, that's right. Yeah. So um, you, these are the kind of things we always talked about, um, the kind of potentials Nigerians are made up of. Yeah. So, but it looks as if the, the the political leaders don't recognize that in us. So, well, in our discussion today, we'll get to settle certain uh, certain issues like that. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Okay. Um. So, when are we expecting you out? Okay, you you're still in school now, right? Yes, I'm still in school. Um, okay. but I, I keep telling my 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 colleagues yeah. that of course we are done because I mean. Um, by this time around, the time we found ourselves, I think it's more of the time we just test our lead in fair waters, okay. looking at what outside world expects from us. And I also believe that anybody in their penultimate and final year right. by now should be doing things that they will be doing when they're out of the university. So I don't see myself in school if you ask me. You know? All right. So uh, some, some of the few things you said you, 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 you like doing or you're doing, yeah. uh, I don't know if you can quickly give us a quick synopsis of some of the things where you really put your hand into <laughs> and we finished that really but like uh, yes but, 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 but let, let's talk about the the core so okay. really all right and uh, like i said i mean we can't divorce law from anybody that's a lawyer in equity yeah. or a lawyer yeah. so i mean i do law and i plan to read more but importantly before then i think social impact is a thing because of course the sustainable development goals of the united Nations, of course um the 17 of them um revolves about around what humanity is all about that's right we all as a leader, as a young person in the continent of Africa, Nigeria, I mean, must also pay attention to those type of areas. I pay attention from, to that very, very much because I believe um, SDG4, quality education, made me. I would have ended up somewhere else. So because education, um, I got education, that's why I could do anything I could do. My parents were not educated, so um, I pay attention to seeing other people get empowered to be educated, um, to be liberated the way I was. So, I mean, if they could get education, like I, I got, I mean, I'm still getting, I feel that it could help me, it could help them too. So I pay attention to so many things about social impact, um, helping the aged, but I'm more focused about the young persons. Okay. Now, young persons from the slums, from the ghettos, from the downtown areas, right, right and those, those type of things. That's what I do most of the time. Do innovative programs, like, you know, taking digital techs into secondary schools, uh, you know, helping the, helping, um, practically mentoring young people to get what they could get for their face of their life. So there are so many in that, in that route. Wow. I will keep doing them. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I'm also into leadership. So, but then that's a matter <laughs> for now. <laughs> no, we, yeah, we, we'll definitely talk about the leadership. Maybe yeah. uh, as um, is going to be by the way, anyway. Right. Um, looking at the leadership quality of what it takes, like, and of course for the period of time now in Nigeria. Yeah people get to talk this is the nigeria of our dream and i remember a few years back when they were talking about rebranding nigeria mm -hmm. and uh, after that they were looking at the um, after the whole scenario okay we're rebranding nigeria mm. now we ask ourselves a question what kind of nigeria do we want mm -hmm. what kind of nigeria do we really want to hand over to the younger generation um, some of us try to have an idea of the kind of Nigeria we want. And the question is, can this leadership 
produce the Nigeria we have here of our dream. So from the narratives, I really want to bump into that because okay. it's beautiful. I see the hot. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, can this leadership yeah. that we have, yeah. based on the narratives, all these things happening up and down, can this leadership Bread the vision of the Nigeria we have of in our Nigeria mind. that we have in our minds. <laughs> but it's, it's, it, well, we must first understand and, of course, identify that, of course, Nigeria has a lot of potentials. Yeah. And above all odds, I, I strongly believe that we will rise above all odds and all the differences, you right. know, that is rocking the country really. But um, we must also then identify and acknowledge the fact that a lot of challenges present in Nigeria and the all the issues that that confront the leadership really and may not have the, that potential to actually birth the nigeria of our dreams Imagine, exactly. we all have this beautiful dream in our mind to say oh i want nigeria to be this way yeah i want nigeria to be that way but then we we forget to identify that the nigeria that we want to get <laughs> would first come from every individual that exists in this country called nigeria you're doing your undoing your actions your inactions every thought of your mind the realization of those thought process help i mean go alongside to, to giving us the dream and draw of our dream yeah and until we take those into cognizance and pay attention to those things it may be very difficult looking at the political landscape looking at the leadership of today looking at the way things are done i do i keep saying it that not even not only leadership are yet to blame but cutting across all sectors across board i think there's a lot of work to be done okay. what's our value our value ratings what's our thought process What's our line of character? What do we do? Mm. How do we um, discharge our duty as charged? All of us have duties in the corner of our rooms. Yeah. How do we do that when people are no more there? These are the little things that Senna climbs. Let me say Senna climbs. I don't want to mention any country now right. or any continent. Okay. Senna climbs, these are what they pay attention to that makes a difference. So I, I, I'm sorry to digress to this point. I, I spoke about, I spoke to a Japanese, I think. And they were telling, saying, saying um, if a Japanese fix a tiles in your house and then you he goes back and you say, Oh, there's a lead to place that is not being properly cemented yeah. and it's been paid. He said according to their thinking, they will move he will come back. Even when you insist that no, it's, it's just inconsequential. Yeah. They will come back and make sure they fix that thing. Because they see it as a service to their country. They see that th little fix that if that is not being done. It's a disservice to their country as general and it can affect them as a whole. So they see it from that angle. It's, diff it's easy for them to put the pieces of their country together because all of them have a sense of nationhood and belonging. Wow. So until, I think until we take it from that aspect, you know, we still have a long, long in, way to in, go. In other words, this, this is the system that works. Yeah. They have a system that works yes, and and which becomes like a culture. Yeah, it, yeah uh, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Kisha, you got, this yeah. is just what yes. you look out for. Yeah. So you can actually look at this and say, okay, these guys, they are known for. This is what they are known for. This is their sense. I was speaking in last week recently and somebody asked a question and say, all the countries have one thing that binds them together. That's why the American, I, like, I don't like to mention countries now. So. People wake up in other parts of the world and they are known for this. They are known for hard work. Yeah. They are known for, people are known for, for um, automobile uh, emancipation, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, some people in many things, we know some people are used to just doing the fish business and they are doing it well. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, they have a value that encapsulates their being. When you talk uh -huh. about the German and with the history and even what's happening now, there's a connection that connects all of them together. So he was asking the question and he said, what connects us as Nigerian? And he referred to the constitution to say, is there even something in the constitution that says that binds us together as one? And it was a very sensitive thing to discuss because I mean, no one wants the answers after them. <laughs> after them. <laughs> but but uh, look, look, looking, at, looking at that, do we really have a unique um, way to identify Nigerian? Because uh, we have blew a lot of things out of proportion. I agree. Yeah. So. The leader, who we're actually thinking of looking at, okay, this is a Nigerian. Yeah. We have a lot of persons pumping into the system, you know, uh, taking away, trying to move us away from the real us, okay. the real Nigerians, okay. into a system that was not there before. Never, it was never was, yeah, yeah, it wasn't there. So at this point in time, we're looking at um, Nigeria. We, we are known for this. But the first thing I like to say, I think, First thing is Nigerians 
before this time, they were known for being your brother's keeper. Okay, I agree. Your brother's keeper. I agree. Which was actually one of the key things. That bind us together. That bind us together. Hmm. Uh, we, we talk, first of all, let's get out there and okay. fight as Nigeria. One Nigeria. As one Nigeria. Okay. So when we return back home, we now get to know, okay, um, after the whole fight, this is an Igbo man, this is a Yoruba man, but that never separated us I in agree. any way. I agree, I agree, yeah. I agree. Basically, on the frontal part, yeah. right? So, any, any Nigerian outside the shore of Nigeria understand that this is my brother. All right. uh, I mean, the, I'm not an Igbo man, but then I'm a Nigerian. An Igbo man means the Yoruba man. They know they are from the same place. Mm -hmm. They identify with themselves. I've been to Ghana recently, and when we see ourselves, regardless of whichever tribe you come from, yeah. you know, we, we identify. Of course, it, we, we get more joy when we understand Kisha is a Yoruba man. I'm a Yoruba man. Oh, that's beautiful. You understand Yoruba? Yeah. But we never, you know, divorce the fact that we were together. We when we get home, we cannot start talking about the fact that, well, you are from here, you are from here. But at the end of the day, we must look at it from the angle that we are all one. This country is the only one we have. We have no other. So, any, regardless of whichever tribe anyone comes from, I think it's very important that one thing that binds us together should be our national patriotism to this nation we call Nigeria. Wow, thank you so very much, uh, Michael. My and uh, we'll be going on a short break. When we return from that short break, we'll take a look at the United Nations SDG. Um, I think it's going to be like um, a wow experience, too. I think so, too, yes. All right, our uh, young people, just sit down well, take your water, cool your system. We'll go on a short break. When we return from this short break, and we get to yarn other story where you go like to hear. So, no go anywhere when they come back. All right, good to have you back. Still, our yard program on VRO TV, on TSTV platform. Well, we have amazing personality. I'm talking about Michael. Uh, Michael is um, one of the gifts Nigeria has. Uh, I know you may ask how. Yeah, wh when you see potentials, you recognize you can actually pick them. And no matter where 
you take them to uh, what happened, you, you know, you see them doing so well. Uh, very, very good. All right. Um, thank you so much again for your time here. My pleasure. On our yacht. Yeah. All right. Let's get to know the um, United Nations SDG. You talked about the social impact and yeah, the rest of Yeah, you're right. So yeah. um, the Sustainable Development Goals is yeah. 17 of them. Um, of course, tailored by the United Nations for the purpose of actually addressing issues that concerns humanity. Right. So if you check around the 17 goals, all of them deal with everything that concerns human being and not per se human being, other things that exist alongside human being. All right. Right, because, for example, um, I mean, go 14, go 13, for example, speak about life on land, life, life underwater. Yeah. Many of us do not, cannot, I mean, live underwater. Fishes are there. So, but there are concerns for those type of things too as well. There are so many things to the fiber underwater. Many things underwater. underwater. That some people also do their businesses under water. water. Now, other things including like quality education. We agree every person cutting across every country of the continents of the world agree on the round table that education is a panacea to a lot of things. Yeah, right? If any countries want to get it right, must get education first. Too. That's why you check countries that are doing well, like Finland, like, like Finland and Norway, they are doing extremely well, even in their gross economic index and all of, because they have gotten the education correctly. And like I said, that saved me, you know. Um, they go one, there are 17 of them, go one, no hunger, zero poverty, zero, 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 zero hunger, no poverty. For example, um, the people where I come from, the Europe people say, um, if hunger finishes in one's problem, other problem is finished. Mm. Can you can you repeat that again? If hunger finishes in somebody's problem, other problems they don't exist. Immediately wow. Wow. hunger wow. leaves wow. the cushion. Other things are no more there. So the United Nations channeled this to be working for a period of fifteen years. So so by twenty thirty, we should have achieved the SDG. All right. The MDG existed for a long period of time. So then there was a working you know, to bring the SDG into place, to take it over from the MDG. So if you go around to local schools and areas, I've been, I've been on fields like that, so you find MDG schools. I okay. don't know if you see it block, MDG block. Yeah, MDG, I think, yeah. These are buildings that were, that were donated by MDG and stuff. So SDG is taking over, but a different approach. This approach is bringing even local actors to work, not just funding, no. Let everybody co contribute that little quota from the corner of the... What you are doing, for example, you are bridging a knowledge gap. Right. Kisha, I mean, what you are doing, you are, is you are, you are, if you ask me, you are advancing the goal four, which is, I mean, bridging the knowledge, bridging gap. The knowledge gap. Somebody right. sitting right there now, knowing something that is not known before. Somebody looking at you and saying, one day I want to be like Kisha. You have given somebody an avenue to hope. Okay, how come the Kisha get here? He, he got educated. Right. He paid attention to, to the environment. And it got here. So... Somebody already looking at that as an avenue already. So many other things. Gender equality go five. These are areas that are still bite in our, in our society. For example, the, the parity between men and women. Some, I believe, I honestly believe, Kisha, that some communities still exist where people pay attention to sending guys to school than females. Wow. That, that's true. Yeah. They you, happen. You, you're, you're they right. happen. The truth you're of the right. matter is there are still communities that feel their families. Don't let me go that far. Yeah. There are families that believe that they would rather send a male child to school, to school than, than a female child. But that's not... This time around, we have now seen people who have shattered the glass ceiling as the women. Many people, NOI of this world, or the Kwesili of this world, the, um, the wife of, our, of His Excellency, the President of Nigeria, for example, you know, many of them, many of uh, them... You, you know, rec recently we have uh, Tanzania having the lady, we have and she's doing... Amazing. More than amazing that. Thing. More than that. Then uh, we have a uh, Equidos uh, that actually uh, Barbados actually yes. got the uh, independence. After the uh, long time uh, with yeah. the UK, they surveyed their so size the and now have a woman, and they will do well. The truth of the matter is, women, yeah. women has always been doing well as much as men has done. Right. I mean, this is this is truth, and I'm I mean I'm a man. I'm supposed to be I mean how do they call it like, now? Uh, advocating, uh, advocating, yeah. advocating for, for but, but really an advocate <laughs> an advocacy for women an advocacy for all of us. At the end of the day, we have seen many people that have shattered glass ceilings. You are going to mention the, the Alice Sally Johnsons of the world. Yeah. 
you are going to, if you may, if you go to faith, you are going to see the Ketrin Kuman of the world. If you move from there, you are going to see the Wangai Matai of the world. You are going to see the, 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 the um, um, many people, many people in that line as well. Amina Gun Fakib of Mauritius, many people like that who are leaders of Shatter Glastily, Mosumbele Lushoga, the Bukun Awoshikas of this world. There are so many, and they've, they've done as much as women, as men would do. They've done much more than men. You, you know why? Because I'm looking at the, the abilities yes. in them and that of men. Yeah. For, and if you look at all these women we actually mentioned, yeah. they, they came up at the point where there was no reason for a woman to show up. I agree with you. In politics, Education, education, economy, e all the even in religious wise, True. there was no reason for a woman to say, I, 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 I am here. Show up. Yes. yes. But this guy is stood up and said, Okay, um, I think there's something. We that have I a need. point here. Yeah. We're going to make that point here. And the, the truth of the matter, they really shattered those glass ceilings. So, go five for example, gender equality, tackles that type of issue right. to say, Let us break the parity between men and women. We all have equal rights. There's no one is bigger than one. In my in where I come from, they used to say a particular bird is not bigger than the other, it's not higher than the other. Mm. The two of them are on the same pattern. So really, these are issues that they go, for example, goal eight, decent work and economic growth. Everybody has an entitlement to decent work and economic growth. You should earn properly. Yeah. You should be able to fend for yourself at least to the normal standard of living. Mm -hmm. How do you do that if you don't get the quality skill set necessary for global workspace? Kisha, yeah. how do you get those type of things if you don't if you don't keep yourself abreast, armed with knowledge enough and information to be able to get you that type of pay? Because at the end of the day, even the Bible says he who works, he who does not work should not eat. Sure. Right? So if you if you work well, you'll be able to get your better pay. So there are so many of them around. Yeah, there. well that, that the, the quote is actually you're, you're right. Um that is what the Bible says. But in Nigeria or Africa <laughs> as a whole, we have a lot of people, the word leader. Yeah. What is their duties mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a leader? Most of them, they don't work. Mm -hmm. But they are the one calling shots for people that are even working. That, that's the funny narrative we have found ourselves in. Yeah, we? and uh, on a lighter note, there's, there's this argument. <laughs> I, I said something like this last week, and I'd like to bring it up again. Okay. Um, I know you would justify. Definitely, you should stand by me anyway. I would. I agree. <laughs> You know, I, I told people that we need to move away from the this. I don't know how to really say it now. We need to move away from the mentality we've been carrying over a period of time, where you get to here. Don't think of what your country can do for you. Think of what you can do for your country. Hmm. And I told someone that we've moved away from there, hmm. based on the narratives we're having. You get to see you get to a particular state government and you hear civil servants working to promote you know the the, the estates three four five six months they're not paid you get to a, a, a prostata you get to hear someone was promoted as far back as 2000 and um, 2016 and up till today no implementation Mm. The salary they earned like seven years ago is still the same thing they're taking. And someone will still have the mind to say, don't think of what the country can do for you. Think of what you can do for the country. I don't know, what you, uh, I don't know your take on that okay. regard because you, 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 you are uh, someone that I look at to, to really have a good uh, Thank you. Ryan on Thank this. You. Right. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> so so for, uh, the, 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 the beautiful quote that says, Think of what don't think of only thing the, your, your country, your country yeah. I think is that I think it was said by an American president. I can't well, remember. Good, good, good. American it president was, said that. I think I can remember the name, but I don't want to guess yeah. on TV. So um, importantly, it, uh, it, it's a very tried quote to be to be candid to say think about what you also can do for your country. Your country. If yeah. you think about it, and I, like I said, I don't want to mention countries of the world. The countries that are on the front burner when it comes to making progress, good progress, they all were given that type of advantage because somebody thought of what they could do yeah. for their country. I can keep mentioning the Correct. colleges of the world. Yeah. The, um, the, um, 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 there, are so, there are a lot of them, you know. Um, um, 
the Carnegie of the world, the um, J JP Morgan of the world. There are so many. Mm. And they did that in their prime to say, let us think of how our countries can have light. Before anybody thought there could be anything called light, right. how can our country do oil to fuel our gas lamps when there was nothing like that? How could we move faster than what we have on the water doing a real line? Somebody thought there could be a real line. Really, that's a very, very innovative thought. Yeah. So that's the, ba that's the um, base of that, that particular quote. Like you said, the challenge then comes, for example, when as much as, w what I agree is, as much as we think about what, uh, how we can work, make our country work, how we can, we can do for our country, some persons is also doing things for the country that we must not also keep their food, their daily living yeah. from. And I agree with you to say civil servants should be paid their money. Like if the if if other persons get their salaries, if legislators get their salaries, if the um, the executive or, um, office holders get their salaries, there's nothing stopping the civil servants or service civil servants to get their money because at the end of the day they, they work daily to make sure the country runs smoothly. Yeah. Right. So. That, that, the quote, for example, as much as it exists, we must also make that type of exception to say some people make the country function. Um, there's also a, there's an adage in the Yoruba people that says the sweat of laborers must not dry hmm. before they get their pay. Wow, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad about uh, some of your adage. Now. Don't mind me. So I'm, I'm, a second. <laughs> <laughs> I am a son so of the sweat, elderly. The so sweat of a laborer must not dry get dry before, before it gets paid. Their pay. Okay. It's not beautiful when the laborer has finished their work and they are, they, are, they are, in fact, in this type of climb we have found ourselves now, I'm sorry, Kisha, to say this. Their sweat is dried up. They've changed their clothes. They are sitting for hours. They are sitting for days and months. And they are still not getting their pay. That is against the law of nature, even if you ask me. Wow, that's really amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure. We're, we're my really pleasure. having a good time here on our YAD program. All right, we'll be going on a short break again. When we return from that short break, we'll look at some of the stories, the narratives we have. Well, plenty, plenty, plenty story. You know, say this one, we just came out from weekend, so we get to tell you what's happened over the weekend and see what we can actually bring up to you. So don't go anywhere. We they come back. <music> next year to see the kind of great things we don't they do before now but we believe say in the next one or two years at least some of his work will be visible on the, the global platform where he will be inspiring young people to d get it right in the first place that is really key so um, some of the stories we have over the weekend and still going on is what we'll be looking at at this point in time all right so uh we are seeing uh, president Muhammadu buhari now having uh, you know a lot of things to discuss <laughs> and of course asking the national assembly to address issues that will strengthen nigeria democracy according to the president uh, President Mohamed Buhari has asked the National Assembly to address issues that will strengthen the nation's democracy. Speaking at the uh, meeting, parliamentary uh, lecture 2021 organized by the National Assembly in collaboration with the National Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies. All right, so actually took place today. 
um, it, it's not a bad idea anyway to ask the National Assembly to do something. But uh, I think, and uh, based on what Nigerians are really talking, by this time, uh, President, there would have been a state of emergency in a security um, sector, uh, security apparatus, and the rest of other things put in place to make sure that we get it right. Well, if there is no security, no matter the kind of democracy you build, it amounts to nothing. So um, if you don't have a structure, if you don't have a structure to actually sustain what you're building, it's a waste of time. If you, if you feel like st torture, all right. So we, we move away from there. And uh, we also see President Mohamed Buhari uh, with other leaders of ECOWAS, you know, uh, coming out to say, OK, uh, we have a lot of challenges in our region and we hope to do a lot, a lot, a lot of things to make sure that we get uh, ourselves up all right he disclosed these on sunday at the opening ceremony of the 60th ordinary session of the authority of head state head of state and government of ECOWAS at the state house in abuja all right so it was actually a busy weekend uh, getting into a new week all right we talked about the national institute for legislative and democratic studies holding right in abuja today all right so we have the senate president who was also present at the meeting and the rest of other people all right so we still have a lot a lot a lot of things to go by well looking at some of the stories we are um, uh, trying to get over the last uh, few days we've been looking at some of the stories first of all we talk about the zoning uh, of presidency to the southeast and we have a lot of people who come out to say okay uh, zoning this uh, presidency to the southeast come 2023 um, will stop IPOP agitation. Well, I don't know how that can actually be. Um, recent events within the country have um, again caused Nigerians to take another look at the nation's uh, security framework and the next uh, elections not too far away. So I, I don't know what your take is on Michael because I don't know what people um, think when they feel that okay when you give you follow the zoning aspect to uh, let's look at it and uh, looking at the democracy that we are actually looking um doing which is not directly a system of governance anyway okay. we have people the, where the origin of this system of government came out what are they doing what are the parameters in place what are the key factors they look at when it has to do with governance successful uh governance and leadership governance, yeah so i don't know what your, your take is on on the south is let me let me let me take it from the south is yeah. um, rotation really yeah. um like i said all nigerians are one okay yeah. there are, are there arguments about the true sense of togetherness um yes there are arguments yeah. are there facts on both sides of the argument yes yeah. there are facts on both sides of the argument to say are we truly bounded as one are there not people that enjoying some type of um, so sweepstick at the expense of others? Do people believe that? Yes, they believe that. Now, uh, there's, a, there's an argument to say if we zone presidency to the, um, the, the southeast, it will stop the agitations of... Well, I, I would say it's a, it's a two-sided thing. Okay. Um, I mean, this has been going on for quite a while, the agitation from the IPOB and all the militants from those area. I mean, and some of them are, are clamoring for self-determination to exist as a country of theirs. Um, so I am sure that there's also an argument or there's a thought running down many people's minds to say, if we give power to the Southeast, would they not, I mean, secede? That, I think, I, I think that's also like a very, very, um, beautiful argument to say that may be going on in people's mind as well. Yeah. That's why I said it's a two thing. Normally, um, constitutionally, I want to say that um, even in civil service and anything that we do, okay. federal character must also be in place to say let there be equal representation of houses, let there be an equal representation of the Easterners, the Eagles, and all the likes, let there be an equal representation of the Yorubas to say they must have an equal um, representation. representation. So it, that goes without saying that even when it comes to ruling, when it comes to, let me call it now, leadership in all sectors, I mean, presidency, 
there must also be that such representation to say, okay, even if a northerner did this now, let an easterner do, let a, 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 a westerner also do. So if we check, I mean, years down the line, we'd have seen people have done from all these parts to... Yeah, but, 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 uh, okay, can I just cut in a bit? Um, I'm just looking at the possibility of having a zoning system of government and still have the best governance. Because okay. I'm just thinking, what happened if you pick Kisha here to be, okay, because it's a time for maybe the southeast. Yeah. And here you're looking at Kisha. Yeah. What is your political ideology, Kisha? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What should we be hoping for? What should be our expectations? Yeah. Kisha, where have you been? What's your expertise? What is, yeah, good. Uh, what, what's your understanding about what you're about, what you are called to do? Called to do. Yeah. Now, probably Kisha must have been in, um, you know, having a, a little responsibilities. Okay, let's get back and check. What are your track records? Yeah, in the past. In the past. Proven. So, time. proven that, okay, when this opportunity is given to you, you are going to handle it you're properly. You're going to handle it properly. Okay. But, I'm just looking, I'm just thinking, yeah. if we take that into consideration, should okay. we still consider zoning? I really consider merit a lot when doing Good. anything. All right. Um, I run, I used to run um, a social enterprise right. and I still run it, but it's still on a hold for now because there are so many things on ground. All right. Um, and so in my, doing selections, I mean, on, when I sit on panels, on boards, I pay attention to merit a lot. Okay. That being said, I also agree that Nigerians across all tribes and tongues have a lot of quality, quality, quality leaders. I don't think we can run out of Kisha. There are so many people outside the shores of Nigeria doing so well, mm -hmm. and they are Nigerians. Some of them are holding political offices, offices outside outside the country, Correct. really. Yeah. So I, I really feel we cannot exhaust the number of leaders as much as we have an Akadishino in the west, we have an Henoa in the in the in the east. We also have an, an, an Amina J. Mohammed in the north. There are so many people in that line. We can't exhaust them. Yes, zoning can, in a sense, tamper with competence. But in my own opinion, I feel if we also finally, or to a barest minimum, find a way to actually remove um, um, the mediocrity from our mind, and all of us are going on competence, we would find somebody from that particular tribe yeah. as competent as the person we would have picked in another place. What, do I, what, what I mean in essence is, if we have a, if we have, um, a John from North, for example now, um, who people think has the competence and all, we would also find somebody who can also match John in other part of the country. My own opinion is Nigerians are so talented, very, very experienced, we just have to pay attention to the the point of would nepotism not come in even when it comes to actually picking somebody from that particular tribe that, it, that it's a time let me say if it was time for egos according to our own thinking to say let's have them come now if they also will not be nepotistic right to actually pick somebody you know yeah there's also a level of picking okay even among yourself pick somebody competent there's a point of saying oh this is not my person this is not my person. Now this one will go pick. And we all, they all know the person that they should pick. Pick, yeah. So if that place, for example, now, that would also again spoil all the process we have said. All, and they will, it's better we now go for joining the north. Because you, <laughs> yeah, because you yourself have not yeah. picked somebody that's competent. But if you ask me, I feel, and I honestly feel this, Kisha, that every part of the country, Nigeria, I am travel, I travel a little bit yeah. outside, outside, uh, inbound Nigeria and outside. And I can tell you for free, there are so many talent and um, potentials across all boards and tribes. If we are true to say we want to make Nigeria work, we want to get people that can work to the table, we would get them. But are we ready to do that? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Thank you so very much. All right. Uh, before we really wrap up on this segment, I'll have it, Michael, here, you know, having a very good time talking about what is happening and what is not happening in our system nigeria all right we also look at some of the stories we got um this very moment taken back all right adopters of quarry district head demand 60 million ransom well, yeah that is what it is like so talking adopters of um, a retired permanent secretary or who is the district head of uh, erubu in quarry state 
I'm talking about Dr. Zuba Irubu, have reached out to his family demanding 16 million Naira ransom. Uh, that is really heartbreaking. That is really heartbreaking. Well, a few um, months back, we have Nigerian leaders coming out to say, okay, um, don't bother when any of your person is uh, kidnapped or adopted. Don't ever try to negotiate to pay ransom. Well, I don't know what that was. We no longer hear that any longer. Mm. So we don't know. We're returning back again to the narratives. And the narrative. Yeah, so the source told the news people on Sunday evening that the kidnappers did not give a room for negotiation but insisted that the money must be paid to secure his release. Right, so there's no room for um, negotiation. So anything where you get to talk, just talk as the matter just be. All right, uh, still on this very one here, we have a bandit killed pastor, adopt women and four children in Kaduna State. Uh, still the insecurity we're looking at so no matter our policies no matter um, our plans no matter what we do if security is not in place it becomes so challenging for us to take or make a step forward so we are looking at what would be a possible way out of this all right uh, michael before we get um to a break or try to wrap up on this program i don't know what is your take is on the aspect of security we've been talking about security 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 and of course i, I want to bring it up uh, one other story here um connected to this uh we we have i mean chief warns of possible increase in activities of boko haram uh, uh, terrorist bandits by 2022 that's a very close prediction yeah that is the uh, i mean chief one possible all right the chief of army staff uh lieutenant general farouk has called on commanders of various to, uh, of operations to prepare for a possible increase in attack by bandits and terrorists among other criminals elements disturbing the peace of the nation now my question is based on these stories now <laughs> i don't know uh, should we cry out this way because these are the custodians these are people that when we are talking about security, we should run to them. Now, there are the people coming out to say, okay, get ready. There will be increase of uh, bandits, activities in Nigeria. Now, looking at these narratives now, based on the stories and some of the things, the projections we have, what do you see hmm. of Nigeria becoming? Because we talked about the developmental aspect of it. Yeah. But what can Nigeria, what can development do when security is not there? Well, I, I like to refer back to the Constitution to say yeah. one of the major function and responsibility of every government is to provide security, security. for okay. their, um, I don't want to call us subjects now, people of the country, citizens of the country. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I, I really agree that security should be one of the areas that border every person on the continent of Africa, even with the fact that Nigeria is the major person involved in our sense now. Right. So, yes, I, I agree with you, Kisha, that to say that um it's really a thing that warrants um declaring a state of emergency really but like i also agree that um governance and people in government understand uh, they are all they are different goals of engagement mm. to get everything done Don't, yeah. we see we we see these things from our angle to say this as ingo are just breaking her into a fire pan but it may not be you know the rule of engagement may not um what they're seeing in intelligence and right. so many so many things from the government may not have gotten to the peak of saying let's declare emergency but really it's a bordering situation in nigeria to say um the hunter has turned back calling on the dog it should be the dog calling the, um, the hunter the hunter so it's not it should not be the the the, the dog pursuing the hunter the dog, hunter should be able to pursue the dog so when the dog turns back and start pursuing the hunter it becomes a problem to say really even people that we are running to now are running because people are now pursuing them what is chasing us also chasing them we've seen all the um signs and all the things that have been happening in recent times yeah. even people who are generals i mean 
uh, people in the in the forces have been attacked. Some have been kidnapped. I mean, I, I, the news does not keep us. I mean, um, silent on the fact that many of the persons have been kidnapped. I mean, harmed. So it means if these people can be affected, even citizens, ordinary citizens are not also safe too. It's a sad thing, really. But I also feel that um, the government are not keeping silent. I, I honestly feel yeah. that they're not keeping silent on doing this. Because, I mean, nobody wants to govern an ungovernable country. country no yeah. one. That's true. All right, thank you so very much. Okay, um, now so we don't work out come this point. Make we run, enter small break. When we return from that small break, all right, we'll be wrapping up on this segment. So just stay with us. No go anywhere. Well done. Right, we're still together here. My name is Keisha, and I'm day here with Michael uh, discussing serious matter. Serious matter. I believe that so you don't, don't get small, small to as it concerns some of the things where we don't talk today for inside our yard. All right, as we did talk here now, make we work out enter inside Kaduna State. As we did talk, the government of uh, Kaduna State don't come outside now, receive the report from the NSAS panel, uh, you know, for the period of time now. We, we don't need to talk about report report as it concerned the answers now the cardinal state um a judicial panel of inquiry into the acts of police brutality all right so um as the matter just be these are the reports we are receiving from different 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 states and uh, today here now um cardinal state don't join has the brutality stopped has all this questions regarding this subject matter stopped well um, we get to hear we're hoping to hear the government uh, reaction or comment regarding this very one all right so let's get to hear also this one the minister of state for health dr uh, mamora has given further insight into the federal government plan to place on red list countries that have placed nigeria <laughs> on the red list in their wake of micron variants and of COVID-19. I don't know what you think about it. I don't know what you make of that. So uh, Dr. Mamora, uh, who was the guest on the different platform, said um, contrary to the claims that the set plan was on tit for tat basis, the move was only expected to be in the best interest of the country well i don't know what how far that can actually be 
So uh, last week we heard where the governors came together and said, okay, they are going to pass through, go through the WHO, that is World Health Organization, to make sure that they help out of this ban not to be that grievous. And uh, today we are hearing the federal government saying, okay, um, we have a way to really go. There's something we can actually do about this. And of course, um, looking at some of the stories trending, we also have a National Football Association uh, Federation has uh, terminated the contract of the Super Eagle coach, uh, Gamot. So I don't know how mm -hmm, those who talk sports and the rest. So he's out of the office as the coach of the Super Eagles. All right, let's get back to our guests in the studio here as we wrap up on this segment. All right, based on some of the stories you've yeah. heard and the rest and the rest and the rest. Of, um, so what is your, what are the last few words you can actually wrap and say, okay, based on these stories or letters, this is what you really have to say before we wrap up on this segment. Well, at the end of the day, I, I think it's very important that we stress this message to every person called Nigerian, whether oh. young or old. Okay. Um, we see what's happening right now. What we saw 15 years down the line were predictions to where we're going to, what was going to happen 15 years after. What we see now is also a prediction of what could be happening in the next few years from now. So seeing this now, mm -hmm. to understand this type of, everybody that pays attention uh, to what's happening right now in Nigeria will understand the type of future that stays ahead of us. Mm -hmm. As much as we have the positive side, we have the negative side. So I think it's very important that everybody called Nigerian, um, particularly young persons, should do more to um, think of everything possible to, um, to help us map out our way out of the quagmire we found ourselves. Right. And I think the only way we can do that is by everybody working on him or herself. I, I think it's very important that all of us, um, young or old, work on ourselves on the areas where we um, should change the Nigerian country and um, I think by doing that at the end of the day we would find ourselves in a better form better than we were yesterday. Wow thank you so very much Michael I'm thank so you. glad that you I'm made so it through. So grateful. Yeah, it's been an amazing time with you. A pleasure and, uh, we too. Are, we are, we're looking forward to having you again at any be. moment because we have a lot to talk about. Yeah I think so too. We have I think a lot so to too. talk about. So thank you so very much. I'm so grateful. Thank right. you very much for having me, Kisha. Thank right. you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, our people. Saying, I don't think we don't till this moment. We go run into a small break. When we come back from there, I get other to we I get to give you uh, concerning the latest happening and the trending stories. We I don't hear some. We're not here, and I just hear them, uh, uh, you know, to get the details. But we will try and make we see how we get the details out for you. And some of them you never even hear them so just sit back when we are back from this break we'll quickly give you some of the story we have no good anywhere they come back Just like Abikemi, Martin Nels make a brighter day than viewing your favorite playlist and more on your favorite channel. Even Mama Abike can relate. 
TSTV Connecting Your World Thank you. 